these two moves are probably the trickiest to do out of all the star stable dressage moves so the two moves that i'm going to be talking about today are fish that is one of the hardest moves to do and the other is bow tie now there's many there i believe there's two definitions for bow tie i'm going to just be talking over one of them because that's the one that my club uses um so first let's go over what fish is because i'm not sure everyone knows what that move is so fish is a uh, it's it's more than a curl over so this is kind of how a curl over would look it's it's a u-turn but it's less than a keyhole a keyhole is like that so in total i'm gonna erase these it looks like so whoops that was not very good like so um i kind of personally think it looks a bit like a ribbon um um i'm pretty sure the cancer awareness symbols is that um but i'm not sure but if it is then i will definitely say so in the captions or something um and bow tie is more than a keyhole a keyhole is like that um but it's less than a curl a curl is like that so that's just the way i think of it fish is the smaller version and bow tie is the bigger one bow tie looks like that so they're kind of similar in the sense that they have two different ends like this is where you end and this is where you start and this is where you start and this is where you end um now the reason why these two moves are probably the hardest to do um, is because of this and I'm gonna show you so on a straight line bow tie is pretty easy to do because you remember that you have to slant up at the end and many people can easily remember that but what happens once you're not on a straight line anymore what happens when you're facing this way and now I feel like the common response is, oh, that's bow tie, right? But in fact, that's not true. And that's probably the hardest part about these twisty, turny moves is that people don't know which direction they're supposed to end up in. And I'm going to show one more example. Sometimes people are here and they think, oh, this is bow tie. And if you look at these two examples, that is pretty similar, right? Like, it looks like a half eight. But in reality, that's not true. If you think about it, a keyhole looks like so, right? Um, it creates a 90 degree angle. Let me draw it out like so. So keyholes, they they form this kind of corner here in between your, your starting point and your ending point versus a bow tie forms this angle. Okay, and if you look at these two right here, these two purple angles you can see that they're not the same size one is like a triangle like <laughs> like that and the other is kind of like a really big triangle so this is on it's we call it an obtuse angle oh my gosh <laughs> an obtuse angle and this is a right angle um for those of you who don't know that i'm guessing that you're probably like well so say I am on a die, what would a bow tie look like? And what a bow tie would look like is like that. And how do I know that is right? Well, if you look at the angles, you can see that the angles are the same. This is bigger than a right angle. And this is bigger than a right angle. 
So if we know this is a bow tie, then you can kind of think about how a keyhole would look on a die. So if a keyhole on a die looks like this, and it forms a 90 degree angle right here, a corner shape, then you know that a bow tie has to be more, right? It has to be one slant more. And a slant is a 45 degree angle. Now, if that was really confusing what I just said, think about it like this. So this is a keyhole, and because a bow tie is more, it has to be in between this point and this point. And why does it have to be between those two points? Oh my gosh, <laughs> between those two points? Because, like we were talking about earlier, how a bow tie is less than a curl, but it is more than a keyhole. Well, you know that a keyhole would end on this line, and you know that a curl would end on this line. So, it has to be right here. Now, that is a really messy drawing, and I'm really sorry if that is sounds just really confusing. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to erase all these so we can get some fresh space again. So, let's do one more example just to make sure that we have this down. So, say I am trotting along this diagonal and I want to do a bow tie right. So, I know that this is a keyhole, right? Because you have a corner right there. And I know that this is a curl because you have this full full spin, I guess you could call it. Um, and you can see that you've done the full curl. So now I know that the bow tie has to be in between this line and this line, right? Because this is a curl and this is a keyhole. So, the only place that leaves this to go is on this line. So, a bow tie would look like so. It's the blue line, you see? So, we go up, and then we turn, and then we end right there. And we end on a straight line. And that same thing happened when we did a bow tie over here. Is more than a keyhole, less than a curl, and we end up on a straight line. So, the lesson learned here is that when you bow tie on a slanted line, you end up on a straight line. And when you bow tie on a straight line, you end up on a slanted line.